In TR-36 and 37, we encountered trig function expressions whose argument was something other than a simple angle theta. In both cases, we figured out how to simplify and express the trig functions in terms of trig functions whose argument is simply theta. We continue this theme now by considering the sine and cosine of the sum of two angles, alpha plus beta. With a little thought, you should realize that we can't find the cosine of angle alpha plus beta simply by adding cosine alpha plus cosine beta. If alpha and beta are relatively small angles, then the sum of their cosines could easily exceed 1, and cosine alpha plus beta can't be greater than 1. Similarly, sine alpha plus beta is not equal to sine alpha plus sine beta. Can we express the cosine and sine of the angle alpha plus beta in terms of the cosines and sines of alpha and beta? Yes, in this video I'll show the identities, prove them, and summarize them. In the next video, TR-39, we'll test them and use them. Here are the angle addition identities. Cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. And sine alpha plus beta equals sine alpha times cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine beta. We'll prove these identities with an interesting geometric construction and these identities will be key in proving the next several identities in upcoming videos. We start by constructing a right triangle having the second angle, beta, as one of its acute angles, and put it in standard position. This proof is simplest to explain with acute angles for alpha and beta, but the results will be applicable to any angle. Let's say the hypotenuse of the right triangle is 1, so the length of the bottom side is cosine beta. Remember, cosine beta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent equals hypotenuse times cosine. This way of looking at SOHCAHTOA is covered in TR-17. And the length of the opposite side is sine beta. Now we're going to bring in another right triangle with acute angle alpha. Let's wedge it underneath beta's triangle, so the hypotenuse of alpha's triangle is the bottom of betas, cosine beta. Now we have an angle alpha plus beta in standard position, and the length of the terminal side is 1, so the endpoint of the terminal side of alpha plus beta has coordinates cosine alpha plus beta, comma, sine alpha plus beta. These coordinates are the two expressions we want to solve for. To proceed with this geometric construction, we'll draw a rectangle all the way around the two triangles like this. The perimeter of the rectangle can be divided into six sections. We're going to solve for the length of each of these sections in this order. We start by observing that this angle at the top is congruent to alpha plus beta because they're alternate interior angles. See video TR-03 for a recap. So this side opposite alpha plus beta is sine alpha plus beta, and this side adjacent is cosine alpha plus beta. This side at the bottom, adjacent to alpha, is cosine alpha times the hypotenuse, which is cosine beta, so cosine alpha times cosine beta. This section on the right, opposite alpha, is sine alpha times the hypotenuse, so sine alpha cosine beta. To continue around the rectangle, we need to know this angle. Well, we know it's the complement to this gray angle, because with the right angle between them, they form a straight angle, and the angle complementary to the gray angle is the other acute angle in the bottom triangle, which is angle alpha. So this angle is congruent to alpha. This section adjacent to alpha is cosine alpha times the hypotenuse, which is sine beta. So cosine alpha sine beta. And this section at the top opposite alpha is sine alpha sine beta. Now we have everything we need. This segment at the top is cosine alpha plus beta, which is a term we want to solve for. 
its length equals this length at the bottom, cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus this length at the top, sine alpha, sine beta. So, cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. This distance, the left side of the rectangle, equals sine alpha plus beta, the other term we want to solve for. Its length equals the sum of these two lengths, sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. And here are the two identities I showed earlier, but now we've proven them. They're the angle sum identities. There are also angle difference identities, which are for the cosine and sine of alpha minus beta. We start with the angle sum identities and simply plug in negative beta for the second angle, because adding a negative angle is the same as subtracting a positive angle. We have terms including cosine and sine of negative beta, which we simplify using the even odd identities from TR-36. Cosine negative beta equals cosine beta, so the left term is cosine alpha cosine beta. Sine negative beta equals negative sine beta, so the second term becomes plus sine alpha sine beta. Here's the angle sum identity for sine with negative beta. Cosine negative beta equals cosine beta, so the left term is sine alpha cosine beta. Sine negative beta equals negative sine beta, so the second term becomes minus cosine alpha sine beta. Let's put the cosines and sines together and notice that the pairs are the same except for their positive negative signs. So we can combine the sum and difference identities for cosine into one identity like this. For cosine, when we add angles, we subtract the second term. And when we subtract angles, we add the second term. The plus or minus and minus or plus symbols denote that the signs are opposite. So with one identity for cosine, we cover both angle addition and subtraction. When we combine the identities for sine, the positive negative signs are the same. When we add angles, the second term is added, and when we subtract angles, the second term is subtracted. In the next video, TR-39, we'll test and use these identities.